Hi, everybody. Meteorologist Sean Sublett from the Richmond Times dispatched the special version of the weather briefing for this Thursday afternoon. Full on weather chat. We're joined by retired NBC 12 Chief Meteorologist Jim Duncan. We're going to talk a little bit about yet another opportunity for some snow this weekend and this time on Super Sunday. Hey, Jim, thanks for joining us. Uh, my pleasure, Sean. Yeah, I don't know if this is going to be a super Sunday snowstorm, but <laughs> no, but, you know, it's just it's one of those things where it's going to be kind of coming at a high, high profile time. Fortunately, it's not coming on a Monday morning like like what we've seen you know, a couple of times, but uh, it might be just enough to get people talking again. Yeah, especially considering how warm it's. Well, today's nice. I was outside today and, and this weekend is going to be quite warm, which plays into it all uh, for the time frame we're going to be talking about. So I think the contrast is definitely going to be uh, making it more noticeable than what would otherwise be. So, yeah, for sure. After what will probably be three days where we get consecutive days above the 60 degree threshold. And then all of a sudden, bang, the bottom drops out for, for Sunday and at least probably Monday as well. You know, one of the things I've been looking at with the guidance that we know that the GFS is, is oftentimes a little more aggressive and it's still the case right now. European is, is still, a, it's kind of working in that direction, uh, but not nearly as, of a, as aggressive regarding the amount of precipitation, whether you want to call that just QPF, quantitative precipitation forecast, or, or the snow coming down. Um, but one of the things I've noticed in these last couple of runs is that the operational version is really kind of an outlier with, with a lot of the ensembles in the GFS. Even though we've seen consistency in the 6Z and the 12Z runs of the GFS, I'm really kind of, I'm not overly excited about this concept of four or five or six inches of snow. What, what kind of things have you been seeing? Yeah, I see the uh, similar. I mean, I, I'm kind of a I'm kind of a believer in the operational GFS, which by definition, you know, is a little higher resolution uh, and the shorter time frames. But I had noticed that today with the 12Z run, uh, this morning's run, that it does not show a whole lot, really. I mean, it's just kind of uh, a little bit of uh, snowfall, not a lot. And I, I looked at the ensembles as well, and uh, it does show that area of precipitation coming through. Um, mainly later Saturday night into early Sunday, and then takes it out. So um, I don't see a whole lot of inconsistency there um, right at, at this time, but I do think that the operational GFS seems to be backing off a little bit on the amounts. So it, you know, it's it's not a whole lot basically, but um, I would agree that you know when you compare the two. Um, there has been a difference, but I think they're kind of in line right now. I don't see the huge difference uh, in terms of timing and how much. I mean, yeah, to me, it doesn't seem like a lot. Yeah, I mean, and the timing, I think, look, that's fairly consistent through through all all the guidance. It's a later on Saturday night into midday Sunday time frame. So, you know, people wanting to do things on Saturday, that that's fine. That's that's no problem at all. And and Sunday may end up being okay. It's just going to be a, a lot a lot colder. Um, one of the things, that, other thing I was looking at with the guidance is that a lot of this particular event, how much it occurs, isn't the classic, oh, there's a big storm going by kind of thing. It's more of a, almost a frontogenetic kind of forcing, meaning that for those not overly familiar with that term, you've got a temperature gradient, cold and warm, and it's kind of being forced upon itself. And, and that's what's going to be driving a lot of this particular band of precipitation. Um, what has what's your experience been, Jim, in, in the, the medium range guidance handling this kind of event, like a, of doing well with a front of genetic forcing type of situation? Uh, I think it does okay. I mean, I, I, I obviously the closer time frame we get, and then you go from medium range to the shorter range guidance, like the North American models, uh, you know, when you see those kind of merging together in terms of what they're showing, I, th I think it's been doing okay. In terms of what I've seen in the past, probably has missed a lot of these uh, frontal boundaries and the front frontogenic uh, forcing, as you mentioned. Uh, this one actually happening offshore when we finally get kind of emerging of the northern and southern jet streams that, that happens east of the Carolinas. So it's a little too far east to be a big player. 
So I do think the, the model, the medium range model is, is picking up on that fairly well. It hasn't so much in the past. There, of course, there's new algorithms and such in the GFS model now, so that might make a difference. Uh, so, you know, I, I think it's on it. I think the, um, the uh, in terms of the setup, the synoptic setup where we have the, 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 uh, the front forming offshore as that colder air comes in, and uh, we will see a little bit of precipitation, but the bulk of the energy is pretty far east by the time all of that gets cranked up. Yeah, so kind of, I, my imagination right now is like an inch or maybe a couple of inches is, yeah. is kind of the ballpark to be playing in right now. But there still, this part of me is, is wondering if this is still going to break one way or the other. We've been, at least in Metro Richmond, kind of disappointed several times. I mean, Hampton Roads <laughs> yeah. has gotten more, you know, earlier in this season, there was more in Roanoke. There's been more in the Northern Neck to the uh, Middle Peninsula. Um, a lot of people have talked about the Richmond snow hole so far right. this season because we are at a, at a localized minimum. They've done almost more. They've had more in Charlotte than they've had, than we've had here uh, in, in Richmond. That's true. And it does look like uh, maybe the Shenandoah Valley and the Blue Ridge sees more out of this one than we do. And Tidewater, which seems to have hit the jackpot this past uh, few weeks, is not going to see much at all out of the snow. The setup is different this time uh, yeah. versus the other ones. You know, uh, we have the, the much warmer air in place, 60s we mentioned coming up tomorrow and, and Saturday. So to replace that with surface cold air is pretty difficult. And uh, I think uh, that's why the focus this time will probably be west of Richmond. And once again, as you said, we're kind of in this hole here in central Virginia. And I do have my doubts we're going to see much out of this here you know, because of that. So what, you know, once we get out of this event, you know, we've, it's cold for a couple of days after that. And then we go into a, a milder, if not genuinely warmer period, it looks like. Toward the end of next week, another system comes through. Um, have you had much of a chance to look at, at some of that, that longer term uh, guidance to suggest that February is, is going to be a, a, a fair bit warmer than normal and into March? I have. I mean, I just look, looked at the models this morning. The uh, the trends show that ridge kind of rebuilding after Tuesday. It's going to be cold right through Tuesday morning. Yeah. And then after, not not this weekend, but after Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday. Uh, but then much warmer. And I think CPC, the Climate Prediction Center, uh, you know, they obviously are showing that above average temperatures. And you tweeted some stuff with us, I believe, the other day, uh, mm -hmm. or retweeted something with it. Um, the um, they're showing that trend, the eight to 14 day outlook and the six to 10 day of above average probabilities of above average temperatures over the east. Uh, so it does look like that the, the back of the winter could be broken after this little episode, at least for a while. Yeah. 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 Because I, I remember what, two or three weeks ago, we had that last system go through at the end of January. There was a lot of buzz like, oh, this is going to be the last one. Yeah. Da, da, da. But obviously it's not. And I think it's a testament to the idea that even when the pattern looks like it's going in a way, uh, it, it doesn't mean winter is, has been shut off yet. No. And it's hard to say. I mean, because you get these these changes, the polar vortex, obviously, if you see how that rotates and, you know, it kind of drives that northern, the polar jet stream, if we see that shift again. But that, to me, it doesn't look like that's in the cards uh, through at least President's Day weekend. Uh, I mean, we we're, you know, we, there have been hints of something around the 20th. Is mm -hmm. that what you're referring to the end yeah. of the week, maybe 18th, 20th? Yeah. Um, and I don't see that now on the guidance, do you? I just hadn't seen that. No, the latest no. guidance. So, yeah, that's why I'm thinking. I, again, I hesitate to say winter will be over after this, but it, it does look like uh, snowfall will will be increasingly a challenge to come by once once we get past this event. Right. And I, Sean, I will add that I remember. Uh, we, I don't know if you were in in this area in Roanoke in 1993. That might be before your <laughs> vintage time. <laughs> uh, but 93, I remember this uh, just so vividly. Uh, we were in early March, you know, and uh, oh, we the had super big, storm. the super storm. Yeah. Exactly. And I remember here in Richmond, we had um, uh, very warm weather leading up to it. And it was fairly mild, you know, into, into early March and very warm day leading into that storm. And then I happened to be out uh, at a funeral out in Tennessee, a family funeral. And the, it was rainy and we woke up to 22 inches of snow in Chattanooga, Tennessee. Uh, so it's just evidence that even uh, when there's warm weather, <laughs> uh, things can sneak up on us even into March, as we all know. So, yeah, I wouldn't discount this winter 
at all after we get through this next little spell and, of it. And, and remind me about, about the March 93 system, because I was in grad school at Penn State at that time, but I was, I was in D.C. when it happened. Uh, you know, we got a fair amount of snow in the western suburbs of D.C. What, what, what did the superstorm do in, in Richmond? Because I have a hard time re remembering that yeah. since I was a little farther it was, north. Richmond was, uh, Richmond was right on the line. I remember we were driving back from Chattanooga. We got stranded there for two days. Um, it was terrible up to about Louisa County, really deep snow, foot plus. And then once you hit Louisa, it was more of the sleet. So you could definitely tell uh, from, say, Louisa County, Oilville, that area, and then everywhere east, there was not nearly as much snow. So Richmond had a lot of the ice. It had some snow, a few inches, but a lot of ice from the superstorm. So it was, again, focused more to the west. Yeah. But it was an amazing storm, you know. No, I think all of us will remember that for a long time, from the severe storms down in Florida, the snow in North Alabama, and, and the like. Uh, quite a memorable event. A memorable event. Um, all right, Jim, that, uh, thanks so much uh, for talking with us today about what may or may not be coming this weekend. Uh, and we will talk with you again soon. Thanks so much. Okie doke. Thank you.